Live on video, standby for audio. All right, good day and good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome back to another Live the Fuel show. So today, yes, we have another new guest co-host for you. And we're gonna be talking a little bit about some peak performance. And uh, more importantly, uh, this gentleman that I'm bringing on for you, he's a professional speaker. Obviously, I hinted peak performance coach, competitive athlete. I think he and I are gonna geek out here uh, today. He's the owner of Burford Performance Systems, and he specializes in helping motivated and athletic CEOs, entrepreneurs, and business owners gain the tools to take their businesses and lives to the next level. Colored by a depth of experience across various, uh, various disciplines, uh, he fo his focus is really creating the most powerful psychology and mindset possible in his clients. And for our regular listeners of this show, you know I geek out a lot about psychology and mindset on this show. So without further ado, welcome our newest guest co-host, Brian Burford, sir. Welcome. Thank you, Scott. Thanks so much, man. I'm uh, incredibly stoked to be with you this, this afternoon. <laughs> I'm loving it. I'm loving it. So and uh, for, our, for our regular listeners, you know I, how much I love Colorado. Brian is joining us today from Colorado. So that's where you reside. Am I, am I correct, sir? It's true. It is true. It's a, the great state of Colorado. I know we were talking before we started that uh, you've spent quite a bit of time out here and continue to do so every year. It's just got a lot to offer. So, and today's a, today's a beautiful day and just like you can stare out, look at the, the trees and the sunshine. So nothing to complain about on this end. Well, it's like a, it's like a hundred degrees here. So uh, <laughs> I, I would probably prefer your weather right now. I bet. Is it, and is it humid out there as well? Well, I mean, it's it's northeastern Pennsylvania, so I'm about an hour and a half from New York City. I'm about okay. An hour north of Philadelphia. I'm about forty minutes uh, south of the Pocono Mountains. So yeah, we we usually hang on to some humidity. It's not terrible. We're not Florida. I mean, let's just be real. <laughs> we don't have that problem. <laughs> but it's not Colorado, right? With the, the dryness of Colorado is pretty intense as well. So. Oh yeah. Yeah, I think it's um. Uh, that's one thing I miss about Colorado living out there is there is a difference there, right? It, it is like a, it's the dry factor, I guess. I don't know. Yeah, it makes, it makes a huge difference. I remember the first time I went down, actually, it's the only time I've been down there to New Orleans. Um, it, it was, it was out of this world. Like I sweat through my t-shirt in like 20 minutes. <laughs> Once I stepped outside, I was like, what is happening? And it was just the humidity is ridiculous because it can be, as you know, uh, you know, 105 in Colorado, but it does not feel the same as like 90 in a place that's more humid. So it makes a big difference. Yeah, I think people underestimate the power of that. Like th this country is so broad and so vast. Um, I, 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 didn't, I never went overseas for travel until I really just banged out continental U.S., man. I mean, I, I was smart enough that I think it was an accidental decision, but I think it was the right decision. I mean, getting to see the entire continental U.S. and the diversity, it's just powerful. We forget, I think, how massive our country is. So, Yeah, and gorgeous. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah, no, no shortage on gorgeous, especially Colorado, <laughs> Utah. Like a lot of people, <clears throat> it's funny, when I moved back here to the East Coast, I was like, you know, I forgot how beautiful Pennsylvania is in, in the Northeast Corridor because we have a lot of green. And people are like, what do you mean by that? I'm like, well, Arizona, Colorado, um, they have a lot of earth tones. <laughs> <laughs> that's, a, that's, that's a euphemism. I like that. That's a yeah. nice would be like, what do you mean by that? I was like, well, <laughs> especially Arizona. Colorado is way better. But I mean, Arizona, we had a lot of earth tones. Many, every shade of brown and tan that I could ever come across, I think I found in Arizona. Uh, I believe that, man. <laughs> yeah. So, well, so, have you always been in Colorado? How long have I been there? Yeah, have you always been? Are you? Yeah, are you yeah. I'm a rare? native. I'm an, I'm oh. a rare native. It's true. We yes. have found something rare, ladies and gentlemen. When I live there, finding a native is powerful. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So you have a specimen on the show. Native born. I was just down the road. I'm now in Thornton, but I was just down the road um, from here in another town called Lafayette. That's where I grew up. Oh, and so I was there for the first yep, 22 years. And now I'm out in Thornton, which is just a little bit like 20 minutes north of Denver. And uh, I do enjoy it, apparently, because I'm, I'm sticking to it. You're still there. You're still there. Still uh, here. Still kicking, man. Speak, um, 
How far is Greeley from there? Greeley is about, depending on how heavy your gas pedal foot is, 45 minutes to an hour, probably. Okay, okay. that's good. Because that's where, that was my first Colorado experience. I went out there for a fire academy in 2000. It was, yeah, it was the spring of 2010 before I got my fire gig out there. So yeah, that was, that was like my, it was a community. I think it's, I think it was Greeley Community College. I think. Yeah. Yeah. So that's where right. I went to my second fire academy. That's how I landed my gig. So for, oh, those, cool. for, the, for the regular people of the show who knew that I used to be a firefighter out there, like, oh yeah, that, that's where I went. That's where I landed that, the, the ultimate lunch interview, uh, which got me on a hot show. <laughs> <laughs> Shout that's out to Greeley. The, <laughs> that's where the magic happens. <laughs> There's not a lot of magic out there. No offense no. To me, it's, it's just not a lot of magic out there. So. It's, it's not. It's, it's, um, it's an interesting place, but I wanted to give it some kind of a shout out because... Yeah, we have to. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, again, I've been back there. I drove through there because I, I forgot how um, not as exciting it is. Uh, <laughs> but I think like any area outside of Denver, they're going to continuously grow because Colorado is never shrinking. There's always more and more people going there, checking it out. Um, falling in love with it like I did. <laughs> I, that, your, your, your state's got more transplants, man, than I, I, I don't know if there's a record on that that they track any of that data. But you guys have a lot of transplants. That'd be, that'd be actually really interesting to see from a data standpoint, just what are, what are the stats on it um, and the ratio of native born toward like, versus the transplants. Uh, I think Colorado would be for sure, probably top 10 in the nation, I'd have yeah. to guess, because it's, yeah, it's exactly like you said. Well, I, mean, I was a perfect example. I mean, I went there to that academy and then came back and the end of 10 for uh, the four mile, four mile canyon complex fire outside of Boulder. And that was my yep. first Colorado fire that I fought. And I was like, oh, this is Colorado. So when it's not on fire, it's gorgeous. So, uh, <laughs> and then I moved there after Arizona. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, it's beautiful. <clears throat> so uh, anyway, peak performance, man. Let's let, let, let's dive in here, okay? Besides our mutual, clearly mutual love of Colorado, um, you, I love peak performance only because I haven't really picked up that certification, that schooling, or anything else yet. But I vibe with every peak performance guru person I come across. I just it, it, it seems to click. So what got you into it, man? Like what made you fall into that? I, I, I like to call that the positive trap. <laughs> yeah, the positive trap, exactly. Yeah. Well, I think initially the seed was planted when I was really young because there was sort of, there was a lot of, uh, I felt like I was kind of in a negative trap. And mm -hmm. it gave me a desire early on to kind of understand what is this all about. It's difficult to comprehend that, especially when you're way too young to be able to even wrap your head around it. And so, but it planted a seed in me of curiosity. And then when I went to college, I majored in uh, psychology. I was going to say philosophy, but psychology. Uh, philosophy, loved philosophy, however, but I did major in psych. And um, <clears throat> it, that was sort of an extension of my fascination with the, the human mind, human psyche, and also human performance, because I just love being around people that are truly kicking butt at play on this really grand scale. It's, it's inspiring, right, to watch performances of whatever, you know, I feel like people are interested in that oh, kind of... I'm sure you're involved. a big fan of the Olympians then, right? Because I mean, I geek out about the Olympics every year. <laughs> oh, gosh. Oh, gosh. You know, it's, it's funny. Like, if I turn on the Olympics, I for sure will get a little verklempt. Just watching anything, the intro music, they're going to yeah. have some shot. You get all up. Like, it's, it's, this is on, man. Yeah, man, it's um, it's a, it's a pretty incredible thing. So I I love it. And can you can you hear my end? Okay. Oh yeah. Okay, perfect. Sorry, I I couldn't hear you for the last end of that. So I want to make sure we're good. But I perfect the whole time. Awesome. So I love that stuff. And again, you know, and in college, I actually um, because I was big into like the fitness thing, even leading up to that. So I got my personal training certification before I was out of high school. And then I worked with the strength and conditioning staff at the University of Colorado, uh, primarily with the football team. And just, you know, especially, yeah, working with those guys while they're training and then being in the locker room on game day and sidelines. I'm just like, oh, like being around it, there's an energy to that. And so what's, what's funny about sort of my around the college time is I also had a gifting 
for working with uh, dogs, <laughs> of all things. And so I was working a corporate gig at the time, and I that naturally and organically grew over time because I was helping uh, friends, family, just people out and about. And again, for training and rehabilitation, had a gifting, was able to help people. And eventually that got to the point where it sort of overtook my corporate job and actually left that and started, uh, you know, a couple different businesses that I built over the next basically like 10 years. One was a dog training and rehabilitation company. The other was a dog daycare boarding facility with a focus on behavior. And once I kind of got those up to speed, it was, you know, and had good people in place, management, et cetera, had the business going um, successfully, was able to really circle back around to my primary passion, my initial interest in first love, which has always been the peak performance psychology aspect that frankly, I was always doing. Because even when I was dog training, you don't get away from it. You're basically coaching people constantly with very, very little dog training, which is of tremendous, tremendous disappointment to dog trainers that Got, get into that industry because they're like, I hate people. I just want to hang out with dogs all day. And then they find out you're going to hang out with people all day, probably more than you do now. And yeah. it was a great fit for me because I loved it. But when I launched Bergford Performance Systems, the, uh, <clears throat> the impetus behind that was I wanted to be able to have a purpose-built platform where I could really do a deep dive with people and get into the nuts and bolts of like the psychology mindset stuff and helping them really truly like take like just take life and kick it in the butt <laughs> but in a good way and to have the type of success and fulfillment that people are really going after and I've I just I love being able to do that and help people and see them grow um super inspiring to me so that's how I got into that's my long-winded version of how I got into um this particular avenue I love it. I mean, because I'm doing some screen sharing right now for our video people. So podcasters again, podcast listeners that are hardcore audio, don't worry. We always link all this stuff in the show notes on the website. So you guys be able to go back and easily get to all his, his site and social media and everything else. But right in your about page, and there's plenty more below this, but I just love how you cut right to the chase. Like, listen, giving people everything they want in life is easy. All you have to do is make them realize that everything they're really after is already inside of them. And I mean, again, you can cut to a lot more content down here, but by the way, I really love these images right here. Um, only because right here, right now, I'm learning to swim because I have to do a triathlon in less than four weeks. So oh, cool. um, I, I will crush the bike, I will crush the run, and I've stayed away from water my whole life. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, so for our listeners, I'm sharing images of him. Uh, you, you at your national championships, and uh, you got a few medals there on you. So what's up with that? Yeah, so it's it's funny that you said so you're you're four weeks out from your triathlon. Uh-huh. That that's cool, man. And you stayed away from the water your whole life. Well this'll be this'll be good news. Um I, I stayed away in the water. I mean I've done like <laughs> wakeboarding and stuff like that okay. with you know adrenaline stuff, but I always had a life vest on. So Right, yeah. right. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, it's funny because I stay I was out of the water pretty much my whole life too, and actually taking up swimming was a reaction to a phobia that I had since I was a kid of being immersed and submerged in water. Yeah. I mean, I could hang out around it, you know, but I didn't have the normal discomfort most kids do where they freak out a little bit. I like lost my stuff and it was embarrassing, but I like didn't really care. I was just like, just get me out of the pool. I'll scream. Oh, hold on a second. What, what do you mean you lost your stuff? Like what kind of reaction are you talking about here? I want to see how bad I am compared to you. <laughs> so when I was doing swim lessons, if I had to put my face under the water or anything like that, it just produced this visceral panic in me oh, and wow. just like this hysterical sort of crying. So it wasn't, again, your typical normal because we all have sort of normal fears i guess and yeah. this one did not fit in that category it was sounds more know, traumatic yes exactly yeah. that's how it was it was very traumatic that's a perfect way to put it because yeah. my, my coach is like well he's like scott you have classic examples of anxiety he's like so as we continue your training the whole point here is breaking those barriers down and he's like scott he's like, you've been in all these other sports he's like we just have to get through this one and you'll be fine i was like okay cool um but I, he referred to mine as anxiety not I'm hearing yours and it sounds traumatic, man. Like if I was your parents, like taking you to these lessons, you're like, 
what are we doing to our kid? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and like, bless their hearts. I mean, I think it was really cool because it's good for your kids not to know how, or, or to know how not to drown, which I did get that far. Mm. But it just was, and I tried to hold it together as much as I could, but inside it was just like tearing at me um, big time. So <clears throat> I, you know, went through, basically, I didn't get in the pool till I was, like 30 when I actually like really decided okay. I'm taking up swimming and um, I was, was kind of inspired by Michael Phelps performance at the 2008 Beijing Olympics. I think it was. Oh, and that's that, quite inspiring. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, holy cow. You look at it for somebody like me that loves peak performance. I'm like, it planted a little seed of like, dang man, if that guy can produce that, like, come on. Like I could step up. Hold it Yeah. Up whole different level, you know, but it, it kind of pulled me up a little bit and seeing like, like, I hate swimming, but like, that's really cool to see. But that seed was there and that kind of grew. And then I kind of hit a, sort of a threshold around at 30. And I was like, screw this, I'm taking up swimming, because why the heck not? When I was afraid of heights, not at the same level of the water issue, but I took up rock climbing. And I know you love rock climbing. I'm like, oh, yeah to hell with it you know let's do rock climbing and so the swimming thing i finally got fed up with it took up swimming got some lessons ended up joining a master's team and just practice like crazy put a ton of work and um wait hold just, on if you're over 30 you're considered a master's athlete yeah so masters is i thought that was bad in the crossfit space because like i'm now i'm, <laughs> I'm 40 now so now i'm, a, I'm like i'm hardcore masters because last last year last year crossfit as an organization, unlock the master's category down to 35. But I was like, well, I don't consider that master's. But now I'm, I'm officially, no matter what, no matter what competition I go to, whether they support that or not, I'm 40. Like, well, you're master's. So, but 30 for, for swimming, I never really yeah, thought about that. It's even worse than that, Scott. So, master's swimming is anybody basically over 18, with the exception because USA swimming takes everybody through like even you know young up to and through like competing in the Olympics. Sure. And so that's like the uber competitive sort of elite level thing. And then, but once you really hit 18, you're in masters. The funny thing about it is, cause I just got back from the spring national championship. So that was my, my second nationals I qualified for and went to, and um, it's, you'll go there and there'll be like people from the Olympics there. So they'll come up and totally screw up the curve in terms of the times. <laughs> but it's inspiring to see them and to get your rear end handed to you. You're oh, like, come on. Hold on a second. Okay. <laughs> all right. it's, it's inspiration aside, you're probably just like, oh, man, come on. How am I supposed to beat that guy or girl? Mm. Right, actually, in this case, girl. I mean, literally, there's, there's elite female athletes crushing anything that I could do. I, I got nothing on that. So. Oh my, oh my gosh. And, and you know, the interesting, I love that about swimming actually, because, and I don't know why, but there's, I just have so much respect for people that are competing at that level, unless they're total jerks, but if they're just kicking butt, you know, I've got in the, you know, even at local practices here, gals that have, you know, gone to the Olympic trials and all this kind of stuff. And they'll show up once in a while to a master's practice. I'm like, what's up? <laughs> I know who's <laughs> going to beat me up the rest of practice, but it's really cool to see just like the way people move and what they can do. So I like it, but yes, in competition, sometimes you look down and I know a couple of years ago, it was like all these people and like Ryan Lochte was there at, at spring nationals. And I can imagine if I looked down the line and saw that, I'd be like, you gotta be freaking kidding me like <laughs> yeah i mean that was like uh when i i've been a biker forever and a cyclist and when i moved to colorado my buddy uh shout out to andy i think he's following the show now he's finally embracing uh personal and professional development like we're talking about here at Grecian Deep performance because he runs one of the most successful bike shops in the denver market area so shout out to pedal of pedal. Little, in littleton colorado because i got to help work on that place before he opened it when i moved there and uh, and the, it, his fiance, not fiance, it was his girlfriend, sorry. His girlfriend and him called me up on, on the move from east to west when I was moving to Colorado. They're like, hey, dude, you should, um, you should go do this uh, endurance race in Texas. I was like, why? He said, well, it's kind of on your way out here. And I did the GPS mapping on that, on that road trip because I, I had my whole life fitting in my car. And I was like, this is nowhere near on the way. 
<laughs> at Austin, Texas is like, I got to go down and around through the Carolinas. <laughs> I was like, well, he's like, well, she's going down and she's going to camp out and do this mountain bike race. You should do it. You, you love the ride. And I was like, okay, I never even did a mountain bike race. I've done like hundred plus mile road cycling events, stuff like that. No big deal. So I meet her down there. We do this endurance race, which is 60 plus miles on a mountain bike. So it's like four laps of 15 miles, you know, in Austin, Texas, out in their dry land that they call fertile Texas land, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> and, and short story on that, I had mechanical issues every single lap. Uh, didn't care. I still survived it, still completed it. And uh, the point, though, is that then after I moved to Colorado, I got hooked on that. And I started doing a, a this race series there. I think it's still going on. It's called the Rocky Mountain Endurance Series. And to your point, when the pros show up, here's the problem with Colorado, ladies and gentlemen. Even the semi-pros are pros. Like, you don't, you don't even have to worry about the pro pros showing up. They're there. But it's like the local neighbor who never really went pro, but he's still performing at, like, the pro level compared to where I'm at. I was like, well, where do these people come from? I mean, talk about surrounding yourself with people that are better than you. The very first race, I got my butt handed to me. I was like, what is going on? I thought I was good. <laughs> and I'm sure, you could, I'm sure you could relate to that from the social oh. world, too. It's like what Colorado's producing like superhumans or something. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's, it's ridiculous, especially depending on the, the part of Colorado that you're in. Like Boulder comes to mind, which is just an entire different universe for so many. I call reasons. that the bubble city. I think a lot yes. of people call that actually, um, yeah. <laughs> actually there's was, there was another thing, um, not, not to offend anybody that I learned this from my roommate. Uh, he was a mountaineer and uh, he took me on my first backcountry ski trip out there. Anyway, he called it the city of Trustafarians. And I was like, <laughs> what, does that, what does that mean? He's like, picture trust fund kids, oh. but dressed like Rastafarians. He's like, they'll pull up in a BMW and get out looking like a Rastafarian and then act like they don't have money, but they do have money. And I was like, what? And then I went there. I'm like, oh, that's, that's a thing. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's, it's not, it's not too far off and it's crazy. And, but yeah, there's so much, so many high performing people and a lot of it oh, is yeah. the altitude and the culture and everything else. I remember maybe a year ago, year and a half, I was in a, I was swimming in a race against this 71 year old guy who kicked the crap out of me. And I was just like, really now granted like swim or pool swim, pool swim. Okay. And granted he's like, a legend but you know so part of me was like damn it and the other part of me was like you were such a stud i want to be you when i grow yeah. up <laughs> oh yeah uh, let's be real there is definitely that level of respect there i mean it's number one it's a smack you you, you, you thought you were good and then you <laughs> that was like my actually it's funny you bring up 71 i wonder if she was that age my first marathon was the marine corps uh, people's marathon in washington dc yeah. Same damn thing, dude. I didn't, I didn't train right. <laughs> I injured my IT band beforehand. I still completed it. I went from no running to doing a marathon. Don't recommend that. I've mentioned this on the Pass Out podcast. Please be smart and work your way from 5K to 10K to, you know, like normal human beings would do. Don't be a mm -hmm. dumbass like me and just, oh, I'm going to go do a marathon. Um, did it, but uh, it took me, you know, over four hours to complete it. But I think I was somewhere between mile, oh, God, it had to be like between like 15 and 20. And I see this sweet old woman just trucking up. <laughs> like she's like not even working, you know, gotta be late sixties. I'm thinking maybe seventies. And she looks over at me. She can tell my legs starting to hurt. Yep. She's like, You're doing great. It's all in your mind. Just keep going, have fun. And just keeps on going past me. And I was like, that just happened. <laughs> <laughs> that kind of stuff like that's that's the kind of thing that happens in a movie and you're like that never happens and then it, oh, happens. it happens it happens oh, like gosh. your ego just goes and then it's i'm still trying to survive my marathon it's like i still have how many miles left that i just got passed by grandma oh yeah. man wake up call <laughs> It's ridiculous. It's ridiculous, but it does happen. And, you know, be, and also being willing to be in a position where that kind of thing can happen to you. I, you know, a lot of people don't want that. And they, so they're not in maybe a, com, a competitive environment, but it's like, it's like, come on, like, because you, because you're going to look, you know, like bad to other people. Co competition to me is so, 
powerful because it allows us to have sort of that social pull and the draw of being shoulder to shoulder with other people that are just grinding and killing it. And there's an energy that's created and we push each other and we do things that we all know we're not going to do in the gym by ourselves. There's times when you have to be in the gym by yourself. That's a majority of training for a lot of us. But you know, it's, it's really getting, you know, with teammates or competing or being around other competitive people and not that for me, I'm not motivated, quite frankly, to try and beat other people. I want to be the best person that I can possibly be and to push the edges of my potential. Mm -hmm. But one of the best ways I've found to do that and, um, and certainly with a lot of my clients, because they tend to be athletically inclined, like I am athletically inclined business owners, CEOs, top level execs, whatever. And they understand that, right? like push, having people around you that push you to become better. And then you push the people around you. And it's this beautiful, beautiful cycle. And it, I think it can be really challenging sometimes if people are so uber competitive that they have to win and beat everybody else. And, and there's nothing, I, I guess there's nothing wrong with being driven by that. But I do feel a lot of the people that that's their primary thing, they kind of, I agree. Edge away from, you know, There's competition. The high. There's the personal high that they still have. And I'm, I'm, I'm guilty of it. I mean, let's be real. I think each of us who are very competitive, you have your own inner goals that you're looking for. But I think what I'm hearing from you and what I started realizing over the past couple of years, especially, is that as we move along the timeline, we start, you know, leveling up, is that you reach a point where, oh, yeah, I'm still competitive. I still want to win. But it's like, oh. Who else can I help along the path? Who else can I bring along in my aftermath, so to speak? Not say, oh, I'm, I'm better than you. So, hey, I just crushed that. So I just want to inspire you with my win. It's not about that. It's about like, I'm just telling you, dude, I was, I was where you were, okay? Or I was near where you were. It just took this much time, this much work to get to where I am now. Yes. So it's, it's proving to people that this peak, I mean, I, I can't wait to hear how you respond to this. The peak performance piece. Like, guys. Mm -hmm. You just had a different place in the timeline. I've been using this this phrase now a lot over the past six months. It just keeps it just flows off naturally. I'm like timeline people, like business world stuff, like just plan your timeline out. You can't like successfully launch a book, a movie, a, a company in five days. I mean, you could. Um, don't know how sustainable it would be. <laughs> <laughs> Sustainability is key. Yep. Yeah. Right. I mean, so how do you how do you want to uh, chime in on that? Because I mean, that's where when I was digging into your background and. And we'll do some more screen share in a minute here, like public speaking, your coaching. And I knew you and I were going to vibe a lot of this. I'm like, where's the peak at, man? Like, people don't understand. Like, the peak will come. Everybody can reach peak performance. I truly believe yep. that. Yep. So. Yeah. And so for my first thought is that the peak performance um, is a bunch of little pretty simple to do things that most people don't want to be bothered with. And again, if you, you know, it's a good discipline or ritual, if it's easy to do and easy not to do. And I love that stuff because I know most people won't do it. I'm like, I'm just going to overtake you by sheer freaking work, dude. And, you know, like peak performance is sort of the echelon and it sounds sexy and all that, but you know, it's not necessarily sexy when all the bleachers are empty and you're there at like five in the morning and nobody else is there and nobody cares and nobody's clapping and you're there day after day after day, even at times when you wonder like, why am I doing this? You have some of the thoughts pop up like that. But the ability of people to come back to that is so powerful. And it's, it's like getting in the trenches and doing it. And I actually wanted to talk to you about this because you being, being so involved in athletics and competition, um, you know, for, for, for so much of your life, it looks like, right. It's been an integral part of you from what I can tell is, yeah, I guess I didn't really realize it until in the past couple of years, especially. I just, just I would just go do stuff. Like I became a spinning instructor years ago and started doing personal training on the side. Like I always had my big corporate gig and stuff. I just until I started building with a fuel in the brand, I never realized like just like you, where athletics is actually a big part of this, and I never really let it shine as much as I do today. And it's like I feel like I have to let that shine because like my my own brother does not follow any of this stuff. I, I, your family is the hardest people to help influence, by the way. But anyway, he's, he's, like, <laughs> he's like, yeah, I stopped following you on Facebook because I don't care what workout you did today. That's like, number one, 
I don't post every workout I do. If I did, you would be drowned. <laughs> okay. So I was like, number two, Holy. I said, I said, it's not about me sharing or bragging about my workout. Right. It's, I have people that purposely have told me they follow me and love seeing that. They're not going to go try and do that exact workout right away, but I've had people tell me, thank you for sharing that. You made me go work out today, or you made me go try something different uh, next week or a month from now. And that's where it's like, people don't understand that. I, I talk about this. I, I want to hear your feedback on that too. It's like, guys, like, social media can be used for good and it can be used for bad. All right. <laughs> I stopped listening to the negative news networks and I don't I haven't had cable in years. Okay. I don't want it. I was like, I, and people say, well, you can still get that on social media. I'm like, yeah. And as soon as it pops in my news feed, I find that page and I block it and I unfollow it. That's my little hack real quick, ladies and gentlemen. You don't like sending news feed, just unfollow it or unfollow that person. Remove them from your influential circle. So uh, yep. what do you think about that? <laughs> yeah, I think it's it, like everything else. <clears throat> Some people are going to say it's great or it's evil. And it's what you make of it. it that's like acting like money is evil. <clears throat> no getting super attached, getting super attached to it and, and like loving it and getting head over heels with money is going to cause, cause you tremendous, tremendous problems. And I had, I had, I've been there in my past. And like, I, I just went to an event a few months, well, almost a month ago now down in Philadelphia, man, Tony Robbins and, and Gary Vaynerchuk and, and all these top speakers, John C. Maxwell were yep. all there. And yep, then thanks. I connected with the, actually just got his book. <sighs> so if you've ever followed, I think he's from Colorado too, actually. Uh, Douglas Scott Nelson. Okay. His book is called okay. Catch Fire. Okay. So he literally caught on fire. Um, but he, he blew himself up in a house, so uh, accidentally. So uh, powerful story, like whole body, wow. like 80% melted, like just powerful man. The point is he, he's now one of the coaches and they train on the millionaire mindset, right? And nice. There's a lot of books tied to that branding. So the whole point here is that is I still struggle with that from time to time because I I'm looking to level up, but I don't want to fall into that place where I want money to be inspirational and influential and create change. That's yes. what I went out of the money. And but that 10 years ago, I wasn't in that mindset. Yeah. And that's exactly like social media. Like you said, I want to inspire, right? I want to help people have mindset. I, I want to do whatever I can to, to give and contribute. And Monday, money can be a tremendous tool for that. Social media can be a tremendous tool. It can also be something that drags you down. It's, you know, it's funny. And like, I don't, and like people totally have the right to do this, but I'm just, I'm going to out with it. So if people put a bunch of political stuff on their Facebook, uh book stuff i just like i never look at their news feeds because it's so it's like that is so okay like i care about i care about what's up in your life and not necessarily all your opinions about something that's going to no. be crazy divisive and like i love i and i love these people very much but it's it's like it's it's just a stressful sort of negative thing yeah. um to me and so i don't look at that if i want to actually watch the news i'm picky and choosy about what I do. And then I know the things that bother me and don't like there's some, like my wife, like politics drives her in like, she just doesn't like paying attention to it because it makes her angry. It makes, mm. it cracks me up and it interests me. Um, so like I can watch that. Hey, and turmoil entertaining. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's like this, it's like this real world, you know, people are all excited about you know game of thrones and stuff like that which is a good show too but it's like it's like this is actually happening like and truth is stranger than fiction and you know so to me like it's like watching the massive chess game and everything so that's oh, yeah. kind of fascinating but yeah getting back to the social media it's you know how can we use it to contribute and give to other people and when you were saying you know hey, i don't care about your workout but like a lot of people are going to see that and they're going to say dang, that's pretty cool. Like I could probably, I could, I could actually do more. Like if he could do that, he's not shoving into my face. It's just there for me to see and creating breakthroughs for people. The little things that we sometimes do for others. When you mentioned that lady, you know, uh, coming up beside you, she could see that you're winded and like, Hey, it's all in your head. Just keep your head down, keep going. Yeah. That can be fuel to the soul. And that can make the difference between somebody like stopping at the side of the road and just giving up the ghost or like moving forward and crossing the finish line. And it's not just our journey. It's the people that are beside us that may see us doing something that we don't even know the impact that we're having. And that's why it's so important for us to be, in, in my opinion, 
stretching our potential and our comfort zone and just ever expanding in that because it gives other people courage maybe to do the same. Yeah, I think people underestimate the power of a positive word or a positive three words. It doesn't need to be a sentence, doesn't need to be a paragraph, doesn't need to be a dissertation, doesn't need to be a public speaking event. That one little moment back in 2008, she was a contributing factor. At first, it was like, it's like, come on, really? And grandma passed me. But <laughs> on the flip side, I like her quick little words. The fact that she loved running that much. Yeah that she's willing to speak up to a perfect stranger and just say something positive and motivational because she's been there so many times where I was. Whether she knew I was a brand new runner or not, she knew it. And that's, right. that's why I love athletics. Like to go what, you know, full circle back, you're asking about me, why I love athletics so much. I'm always posting stuff. And athletics has been a part of my life for a while. I mean, I tried getting into it when I was a kid to answer your question. I tried I did, doing the baseball thing. Didn't like the whole favorite kid thing, like the son of the coach, blah, blah, blah. Just didn't really vibe with baseball. Did it for like two, three years. Then I tried getting into basketball. And again, didn't like the whole clicky uh, stuff. But we went to a small school. So I got into martial arts. Hmm. And ended up falling in love with that until I was probably 18 until I had to start paying for it myself. And <laughs> I think my parents put me into karate just to uh, try and calm me down. And <laughs> Because they at least instead of them beating me, they had a sensei hitting me with a bamboo stick on the back of my knees. Really? Um, but you're you're so low energy. I can't believe they needed you to. I know, right? Yeah. Seriously, I was like, I, I think you're blowing this out of the way out of proportion. Way out. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> <laughs> but, but I mean, but karate. I, mean, I still use the, the lessons I learned from martial arts to this day. I still use them. I'm not into it anymore. But I mean, I still follow it. And then, yeah, years later, that led to biking more and cycling and spinning instruction and obviously fast, I mean, ski race coaching for, for 11 years and uh, obviously getting into marathons and charity, like big MS 150 run, yada, yada, yada. I mean, now, now I'm a, I'm a, you know, I'm still a, a CFL one uh, CrossFit coach, but I don't do it all the time because I just, I'm busy doing all of this. So right. every once in a while, like last week I went and coached a class for my buddy's gym. He's like, Hey man, you always show up for Sunday's Hero Wads. You're a CFL one. I, he's like, I had some life balancing with the kids. I'm like, dude, go. I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go there and sweat anyway. I was like, I'll coach the class. Don't worry about it. I, he he doesn't pay me. I'm gonna be there anyway and working out with those guys. And it's just fun. But I love. I, I've always had coaching in my life for the past, even in the corporate space. So I'd say 15 years now. There's been some form of coaching in, in my part-time professional career, if you want to call it that. <laughs> nice. Awesome. Athletics are a big lesson planner. I think that's why I think that's why I bottle your brand so much is that sports, man, they teach you a lot. They teach you to win. They teach you to lose. They teach you how to lose. And that's the most important thing. And maybe the word lose is not the right word here because kind of tying it together what you were just talking about regarding uh, religion and, and uh, politics. Uh, business 101 I learned from a mentor a long time ago. Don't talk about it. <laughs> right? <laughs> Politics and religion do not belong in business. Like, it, it, church and state, whatever, separate it. So, like, nobody cares either. That's no. the other. If somebody really cares, like, I would come to you if I really wanted to know. Yeah. <clears throat> in a private conversation, and I would ask you because I care, most people don't actually care. And it's, it's like, I don't, I have no desire to get into like this battle of wills with people. I'm like, you can yeah. think what you want to think. Like that's, that's the thing. I don't have a problem. I actually am really curious to why you feel that way or you believe that thing. And I genuinely am, you know, it's like, it's like I have no desire to, to hate on people or something. Oh. Um, I want to know what they're about. Right. But to, to like, just like some people are constantly telling me what they think of stuff. Well, you know what it is. See, here's the deal. I love where you're going with this. I'm vibing on this. Popped this in my head. I'm like, the problem with people posting about politics and religion all the time is it's very surface level. You're not you're not giving me what's going on inside of you. You're giving you you're, you're adding an opinion in to an already something that's already blown out of proportion, right? I want to know who you are. I, I don't care what political view you have, what religion you have. What are you doing to positively change the world? Okay, what are your what are your core beliefs? Not the religion. Not the politics, because guess what? Uh, I, I'm not a church guy, but like your priests change every few years, I'm guessing, or pastors, whatever you call them. Religion, hello, we get a new president every so often. We get a new cabinet. We get, it's constantly changing. 
So just right. deal with it. You're going to go from Democrat to Republican to blah, 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 blah. I don't care as long as the job is getting done, as long as we're creating positive change moving forward. That's all I care about. And exactly. those, those people we elect, those are tools. I'm electing a tool in the process. I'm adding a new cog or a new, I'm, I'm swapping a gear out in this machine of, of our success in our future. Exactly. And, and it's, it's just like getting crazy caught up in it. The other thing is it can be used as, I actually do use um, in my case, when I follow politics, I use it as a distraction, but on purpose. Mm -hmm. When I'm having downtime, it's like an entertainment distraction. I don't, and by entertainment, I don't mean like there's actual serious issues. You hinted at that with the wife thing there. It's, you can tell there's some kind of entertainment mixed in there. <laughs> yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, absolutely. But um, it's, you know, it's it's intentional. It's not this. It's not this thing to get all worked up about and use as a distraction of like, hey, I can't you know, I'm so angry about, there's so many people that are so angry and get caught up and baited into things. And it's like, holy cow. And, and it's some people, I, I feel what it's, what scares me about it is when people are doing it almost subconsciously in a way that it's sabotaging where they're trying to go because they're actually using it as a diversion to like yeah. put all their focus over here. And it's like, stop crying and get off your yeah. butt. You can't like vote vote there you go after like yeah. after i mail in my stuff i don't even really pay attention to like who like i did my thing awesome i'm getting out i'm on you know i'm on the trail if i'm running it's I'm funny because we don't we never talk about i mean we're not really getting the heavy into politics ladies and gentlemen but it's just like this is very very upper level it's just like guys like if you're upset with something take action a lot of these people who complain don't actually participate in the elections so it's like okay well then you, what are you actually doing you're just a big Blow, blow hard megaphone. Like, okay, if you want to create change, follow the process. Okay, right. complaining about it. First of all, well, let's go back to peak performance, right? Yep. What is the amount of energy that you are exerting to go down the religion route, the political route, and I'll just call it the negative Nancy route, right? Like you're, yep. you're taking all that power, all that energy, all that time, and going down this route, that's not actually going to create any, any actual positive change. Or you get redirected, hopefully by yourself. If not, you get a coach or you get somebody yes. who's positive in your life to redirect that powerful energy. Yes. And you start creating positive change. And it might be something small yes. today, this week, or next month. It's like, oh my God, if we could redirect all of that anger, all that energy <laughs> into something positive. Oh. Yeah, absolutely. And, and that's, that's, that's the entirety of it, right? It's, it's okay. Like I get it. And unless you're a professional, unless you're an actual politician, let's take all that energy because I'm so impressed by the amount that's going down this path, whatever it is. Cause I don't think like you and I are just here. It's like, cool, whatever your view is, whatever it is, yeah. what I think, it, you know, at least grates on me a little bit is like, you're not a professional politician, whatever. So channel all that energy. It's this, it's the same thing I used to, you know, deal with so much in, in like the dog training world is a dog would have a ton of drive and energy and it's just going crazy. And I'm getting called because like, Oh my gosh, my life is, is in total shambles because of this dog and stuff. And I go in there as a trainer, just like I was, do as a peak performance specialist. And I'm like, dang, man, that's an impressive amount of drive and energy. Now, if it's not channeled, it's going to destroy you. But if we channel it right, holy Moses. And I think when you, you, know, you said your parents put you in martial arts, that's great, right? I've got somebody with a lot of energy and let's put some structure around it in a way mm. that's directed towards something that's going to be constructive for them and their future and where they want to go and what they want to do and who they want to become and not get caught up in some side issue that doesn't, it's not really germane to the, the core of your life and who you are. And I think that's when you said, it's like, who are you at your core? What do you care about? And getting in touch with that and, and really focusing on ourselves, because if I can't change the you know, some system that I, I like or don't like, don't agree with. It's like, I can work on me. And that's what it all comes back to is what can I do to make myself better? Because I got plenty to worry about in my own game than to like, look at somebody else and be like, you got to do all this stuff. It's like, I got plenty to work on at home. You know what I'm saying? Oh, yeah. I, I tell people all the time, like my, my own, my brother and other people in my life to like, you need to care more about politics and stuff like that. I'm like, I do care. Let me, let me redirect this. I do care. Yeah. But I also know what my energy and my efforts are actually going to bring about. So 
for now, until that election happens, I'm going to go do what I do in this world and make positive change. All right. Build a business, help people build their businesses, build their brands, run a podcast, trying to get all this free knowledge that you and I are doing. This is free content. All right. What, to be fair, this is considered entertainment, but this is also literally like free coaching people. Like, <laughs> hello. Hope, if we get through to just one person today, when they hear this recording, I, this is why I got into podcasting because it's not just about me sharing my voice. It's me bringing your voice to the masses as well. So we're creating change or we could, you and I could just unplug right here, right now, go turn on the negative news networks and sit there and waste the next two hours sitting on a couch, watching a television about people complaining about what's going on. Like, well, great. You really created a lot of positive change out of that. <laughs> yeah. And it's, and it's a touchy, it's a touchy thing. And, and I hope this is okay to go into, but I remember when nine 11 happened, I think we all remember kind of where oh, we nine 11 triggered me eventually getting into firefighting for a little while too. I could, I could not let that go. It was such a massive shift. So. Yeah. And, and like the, and it's interesting to see how, you know, for me, it was just, fascinating how I kind of responded to that because I, I don't think it, I responded the right way but I'm just going to tell you how I responded to it because I still think it's like interesting um I woke up I remember I was like turning off my alarm because it went to radio um mm. when it came on and of course it's all over the radio and stuff and I was like what all right so I get up I go gosh I was still at my parents' house when that happened um went down the hall like check out the tv I was like damn it. Like, that's insane. Mm -hmm. And then I turned around and I went back to my room. I got dressed, went downstairs, put on my running shoes and I went down the track because I said, you know what? I could sit here watching the news all day. That's not going to do crap for anybody. If I end up getting like drafted into the military, I didn't know what was going to happen and stuff. What I can do is go down and prepare and do mm -hmm. something and be physically fit and do something constructive. But like, I'm not going to sit around and watch the TV yeah. all day long. Oh, right? I, I, I want to. I, I woke up. I was going to do something. I was. Uh, it's funny. Everybody, everybody remembers where they were at 9/11. I mean, because there's psychology behind that. It's something so powerfully impactful in in life will just blaze that into your long-term memory. Yeah. And uh, it, it's. I woke up, stayed with my family, saw the news, got dressed and went to work. <laughs> I was like, it's not that I don't care about what's happening, but that's what unfortunate things like that are trying to do. They're trying to disrupt, terrorism disrupts your life. That's the whole point. I wasn't gonna let that happen. I'm like, I have a job to do. I mean, at the time, I actually had two jobs. I had my corporate gig, and when I wasn't, I started three jobs. I was a corporate gig, teaching spinning, and uh, I was a bartender. So Once again, because of your low energy. Yeah, I, I know, I'm really, <laughs> really crazy. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> and yeah, and I turned that television back on uh, when I got to my got to the restaurant to bartend, mm -hmm. and obviously that, and then I got I I, I literally saw the second tower fall. Yeah. So I mean, not to, not to dwell on the, on the past, but I mean, this past was a powerful shift and change for the world, not just each of us individually. But the point here is that I wasn't gonna let stuff like that disrupt me. I still had things to do. I mean, yeah. I still had people to people like, oh, well, bartending is not gonna change the world. I'm like, yeah, but I had a job to do. Okay. All right. Well, what do you want to do? We're going to sit home and just sit there and just do nothing. I, can, I, I can go to the job and turn the TV on the bar and I can have conversations with people yes. and we can try and move on. Move and, move. And, the, and the thing about, you know, like bartending is not going to change the world. Like, how do you know? What if you change one person's world in that position? Like that, that's a huge yeah. thing. And I think we can underestimate things that we would consider like not world and life changing, but we all play a part. Yeah. I'll play a part. I remember it. I, there was actually a guy who came in. He's like, I just need to get off of the road and think about this. And he did not come to drink. I, I remember it to this day. I forget the guy's name right now. I've been Dave, but he drank club soda. That's it. He yep. just wanted to come down and have a conversation, not be driving his car. Like it was, that's for him at that point in time, that's what he needed. And I was like, Whoa, okay, well I'm here doing my job. If I wasn't there, what if he was out on the road? I don't know. Like, we don't know what could have came out of that. So yeah. I don't know. It's funny. I never really think about that. It's literally just now. That's crazy. 
Um, and a lot of people freeze too, right? You mentioned something happens, that's the entire point is fear. And when people will get fearful, they tend to freeze and not do anything. And I actually wanted to point this back to you because we talked about fear earlier with, you know, overcoming fear and how much mm -hmm. athletics is so much actually about that. If you, you know, if you sign up for a race, there is going to be a little bit of, you know, if it's not fear, it's a little bit of like nervousness, and, and excitement. Done. Yeah. What, yeah, anxiety, whatever you want to call it. And for you, being in a position of, you know, being, you know, like the hot shots, like, holy cow, I want to know from you, because <laughs> you have to get in some crazy situations like that. Yeah, we were, we were in some, yeah. yeah. And, and even just like the training's insane. So how did you really process fear and did you develop a system for that? And what did you find most beneficial? Uh, luckily... I was called the old guy on the crew <laughs> <laughs> okay. at, at 32. Um, oh, geez. I mean, this is, this is, cause, uh, yeah, this is, um, this is, yeah, this eight years ago it was my rookie year, 2010. Um, I was considered the old guy. Most people coming in 18 to 24, just like the military, they want minds that are moldable, trainable. Um, and I can thank things like me getting, trying that marathon, um, in 2008, two years prior. Uh, getting into endurance cycling, 100 plus mile events. So I've talked about this many times. I think athletic was a huge part of this because and that, that's what I did to win over the superintendent in that lunchtime job interview at the academy. Was I like, listen? I was like, I know you. you he came right up and told me. He's like, you're old. He's like, I don't know if you have the mindset that I need. <laughs> he's like, I need multiple minds. He's like, it is. It, this is one of the most dangerous jobs on the planet. He's like, I can't have people having independent thought. He's, right. like, he's like, unfortunately, he's like, I know your resume is impressive. You've done corporate stuff, blah, blah, blah. He's like, uh, great. You did a great job selling yourself. He's like, but right now, I need people that I know that have that ability, but can follow orders. And the funny thing is I was like, anti-military my whole childhood, too. So I was like, oh, there's no way I'm going to go in the military. Uh, I don't, I don't <laughs> want to be told what to do. I'm independent thought. Um, <laughs> dude, I had to suck that up. And it's like, listen, Scott, you set this goal that you wanted to get on a hot shot crew. So that means you got to put your shit aside. And trust me, I yeah. struggled. I, those two years, mm. I, I just thought like I just turned that switch off. It was constantly a struggle for me. Even when I knew we made mistakes. Like one time we got chased out by a wall of fire. I was like, when I got off of that vehicle and we were doing rapid deployment and I'm just like, we should not be here. Like my gut kicked in. The fear was there. The anxiety was there. I felt the heat from the wind. I felt the wind shift. I felt the wall roar up. I saw it. I was like, we should not be here. That's crazy. Eagles are already driving down the road. Like, well, there goes that. And then literally in less than like a minute, I got my radio on. Everybody's like, let's get the hell out of here. About yeah. face and we don't run because you're controlled and orderly. You, you speed march down the road where you came from. <laughs> so, and we got out fine. And luckily we were on a road, an actual regular road. And, uh, but it's, it's stuff like that where it's like, mm. it's training. That's putting in the reps, right? Like the first yes. of your fire season, when you show up, First two weeks of critical training, they break you down. Just, this is all straight out of the military, man. Like this yep. is classic Marine Corps training. Um, so <laughs> they said, listen, first two weeks, no days off. We're doing two days. That's where I found my passion for CrossFit. I never held CrossFit one. I show up in the mountains of Arizona and he's like, all right, we're doing two wads a day, CrossFit format. I'm like, what's a wad? What's a CrossFit? Um, uh, why, why is it like after day one, I wake up in the morning, I can't move <laughs> when you thought you were fit. Um, oh yeah. That those first two weeks were not just physical. They were physically breaking you and mentally breaking you down because they said, listen, guys, for the next six months, it's 16 hours a day, you know, two weeks straight on fire assignments before you get days off. You're going to be physically exhausted. We need the mental fortitude. And that was the one thing that I think that helped me a little bit was because I had a few years on me and I had done the endurance sports. Yep. It, 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 that helps answer some of your questions. Yeah, definitely. Like, yeah. like over, over training, because you get to a certain point where you've done, you've pushed your body so far that uh, you push it past what you actually are going to need it to do, hopefully, right? In athletics, it's like if you want to run a race, at a, if you want to run a 5K at a certain pace, it's interesting because sometimes people, and I, I'm not like a running coach, but... I, I just in my mind, I'm going, 
okay, you're training for a 5K by running a couple 5Ks every week, not races, just like in your training. Mm -hmm. And I'm thinking you need to be doing sprints. You need your body to be used to going so much faster than you need it to go in that time that you feel like you're crawling on race day. Yes, yeah. you do need the endurance for it, right? But what most people don't have or feel like they have is the legs under them and the speed that they need and it's the legs that feed the wolf right and so it goes back to like having that discipline and putting in the training that you talked about i love that and then at the very beginning you basically talked about putting your stuff aside which if the goal and the dream and the vision it can sound corny if you wanted to, but it's true. If it's compelling enough to you, you can set aside things that you've told your whole life you've been really opinionated about. And you're like, you know what? That's actually of relative unimportance here yeah. because I got something bigger to go after. And if you put legs underneath a vision that's compelling enough for you to get outside of yourself and put your stuff aside, it's, it's like, it's game over. Oh, it's, it's, it was, Hands down, yeah. I, I, to this day, I, I, get, I get people keep telling me, "I gotta, you know, I gotta figure out how to write this book," because uh, everyone wants to write a book about this. So like, all right, I'll, I'll figure it out when I have the time. I have to, I have to make the time. But there's just been so many mental. I mean, obviously, the physical shifts happen, but the mental shifts—that's the mind game—is is really, really what I take when I when I think back those years. It's only two years. Like I, I tell people, like, guys, like, there's people doing this as a career. I mean, the video I put. Workout yesterday I posted was of me doing Hot Shots 19, which honors the fall of 19 Grand Mountain Hot Shots. It's something yep. we had uh, created by the CrossFit organization. We petitioned them. They created a Heroes Workout. I do it every single year, at least twice a year. Uh, obviously, this weekend was a five year anniversary when they passed away on right. June 30th, 2013. I take that very seriously because I knew 17 of the 19 faces. Like, we sat like in Chow Hall under a military tent eating in the mountains. Like, we actually camped one of the the movie only the brave mm -hmm. came out this past year if you haven't yep. seen it go see that it's a um, great movie. well the one fire is called the horseshoe fire in the movie i was on that fire like we mm. 2010 we got flown up in huey helicopters to the mountaintops in uh, the chiricala mountains near mexico border in new mexico because they couldn't wait for us to hike up because that's what hot shots do you just hike it like no right. no, no we, need, we need you up there faster so they deployed uh, I think we had three to five crews in that remote section and they were one of the crews and we were one of the crews. And then we ended up spiking out. There was not the original game plan. Like, well, we're going to send you up there and there's a chance you may spike out. That means you're living up there for the next like two, three days until we have you hike out. And so they ended up like airlifting in like five gallon buckets of food. That's going to be a whole chapter in itself. Like how to set up a mobile uh, chow hall on the side of a mountain. Oh, jeez. Like, that are blown up by a cargo net and a helicopter long lining it in. I have photos. It's awesome. Um, that's cool, man. That's that's <laughs> crazy, though. That's just crazy. <laughs> but it's like, ugh, there's so many experiences in just two years. Like, so much crammed into those two years. So much mental reprogramming. Mental yeah. reprogramming. Right? I mean, like, it was like, again, anybody listen to this, if you ever want to just drop everything like I did, and just you want to accelerate mental reprogramming, there you go. I mean, granted, it's kind of dangerous, but if you can put that aside and, and embrace your fears, I can't even, I still can't fathom all the amount of reprogramming that happened in those two six month seasons in 2010, 2011, because you're all in, you're all in. There's no, you're either in or you're out. I mean, that's it. So. And there's an intensity to that, that, you know, if you put yourself in a position <clears throat> to be pushed at that level, I think one of the ways we come to really believe we can do something is we're just in a situation where it's all we can do is really move forward. And then we get to a certain point of how this happened so much with me and a lot of my clients. And then you look back and you're like, holy crap, like, did that just happen? And it changes your perception of who you are and what you can do because you, but you have to put yourself in the position to do that yeah. and be um, intentional about that. It, it, you know, it could happen by accident. Some people, they do, they have epiphanies out of the blue or something crazy happens in their life. But I, I think that for the rest of us, we want to actually put ourselves in positions to pursue those type of opportunities. And it's different for each one of us. Some people are like, I don't really care about athletics. I don't care about, you know, this other stuff, but it's like, find your jam and yeah. put yourself in an uncomfortable spot where you're committed to do something um, to where you can't, you like, you don't have a backdoor exit. And that could be something, again, really, really simple. If you're, if you're like, you know what, I, I want to, 
I want to take a, I just want to push myself physically. And I've always thought about dancing or something. It's like, awesome. Before you talk yourself out of it, sign up for a class and get in yeah. there. I mean, I, I love we're talking about this. And I, real quick, by the way, I apologize. We're going a little long. Are you all right with time? Because Oh, I'm good. Yeah, okay. I'm good if you're good. So this happens all the time. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I love where you're going with that because uh, you kind of rewind back to you were using me as an example regarding the, the swimming thing, right? Like, trust me, I've always had anxiety in water. Uh, I'm like, uh, the first day I showed up for lessons, he's like, all right, let me see you swim a lap. <laughs> he's just like, all right, get out of that lap pool. I'm putting you in the old lady pool. It's like this warm water pool full of old ladies doing their, their styrofoam exercise dumbbell things. And I'm like, <laughs> like, all right, I, I got to suck it up. Like, he's a six guy. He's like, you muscled that lap. He's just like, your, your lungs are ready to rip out of your chest. He's like, yes, yeah, great. You've proven you can make it to the other side of the pool. He's like, I got to teach you how to relax. Mm -hmm. um, but before they even came to these lessons in the past month or two, it's last year, two years in a row, I'm going to watch my friends do their triathlons. And everybody's yeah. like, oh, Mr. Scott, former firefighter, do every other sport. When are you, you going to man up, you know, do a triathlon? <laughs> like, you can cross the bike, you can cross the swim. I mean, come on, do it, man, go for it. And then yeah, my fiance busted my balls too at the same time, didn't help. <laughs> so uh, <laughs> uh, she's, she, she, she cracked the nut on the Olympic distance last year. So she's now able to do Olympic distance. I was like, jeez, I'm going to play catch up here. <laughs> um, so to your point, everybody's just like, oh, so, so my buddy, one of my best friends, Jason, he's like, he's like, Scott, you do it. He's like, come on, you're, you're a committer guy. Commit. I was like, all right, I'm in next year. Let's do it. 2018. He's like, all right, I'll do it when you see it. I went home and booked it, paid the money, yes. done. He didn't, he didn't, he didn't even sign up until two weeks ago. <laughs> I, was like, I was like, dude, I committed a year ago. Dude, book where, where it, are you man. at? He's like, I know, I got busy, forgot about it. He's like, I almost missed the, the cutoff. And I'm like, yeah, because you're doing it with me. Yep. I was like, you're the one who pushed me. I was and like, what, <laughs> oh, that's and what and what scares me is a, a what if I feel like people miss bigger cutoffs in their life that they can't get back right? that is much bigger yeah. than sport. And it's like put yourself out there. It's scary, whatever, you know, we all have to decide if we're more scared of regret or our fears and what is going to be driving us. And um, there's, there's something you mentioned earlier that I think would be, I, I wanted to touch on too. You, you said your, your swim coach was like, I got to teach you how to relax because just through sheer willpower, it sounds like you muscled your buns down the pool and you got to the other side because that's how you are. You're a winner. You're yeah. going to get there. Um, I I'll, I'll find a way to do it, man. I'll muscle the hell out of it. <laughs> that, I that. He's like, that's not sustainable. <laughs> right. And I could totally relate to that. And I think, you know, a lot of your, your listeners certainly just be like the, the type of audience that you have very much hard charging people, I would guess by and large. And it's finding that balance of learning to relax because we can get so caught up in the trap of like type A, go, 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 charge, charge, charge. I'll just muscle my way through it. And it's like, but you're going to freaking die because you, you can only go so far putting out that much energy inefficiently and, it, you know, scaling it back, getting efficient, especially in something like swimming. It's a great metaphor, right? You have to be streamlined. You have to do things efficiently. You know, if you're a good swimmer, you're putting out way less effort to go like twice as fast as somebody yeah. who's maximum effort. And it's like learning how to relax, learning the technique and not everything. Sometimes, sometimes speed and all that and like the power and all that is acquired by slowing down down and that's very counterintuitive to somebody like myself i've had, had to really work on it because i just know that that's a blind spot for somebody with oh, I'm, my I'm personality i mean it's funny because everything we're talking about right now i gotta do, like i, I give you some more, more plug in here on the video feed because everything we're talking about right now is i can tell it goes right into your one-on-one -on -one coaching so i'm i, I have to pause real quick because i, I gotta plug you i'm a marketer i gotta do that so <laughs> uh your tag here on the page only those who have the courage to start ever stumble upon things they never want to have what want to have end. So the courage to start, we already talked about that. Great. You can start muscling it and everything, but what are you going to do to sustain that path, that energy? And that is everything you're talking about. Exactly. You can't muscle everything. Okay. I learned that in fire, dude. You have a 16 hour shift ahead of you. Okay. We still took breaks. Like they still made us sit down because we're, to be a hotshot, they said, guess what, guys? We only hire type A people. We need people willing 
to beat the snot out of themselves. He said, because then all we have to do is teach you how to sustain it and slow you down a little bit. He's like, it's harder to get people to that level. He's like, we, so every, like half the team is like football players or, or already, already former military, like the hard chargers, because they needed that. Because then they said, listen, from a squad boss standpoint, it's like, I just got to teach you guys how to work together, learn teamwork, learn communication, and then slow you down so we can sustain your power through 16 hour shift times two, you know, times two weeks. And that was very uh, educational to me as well. Um, and I, I'm sure that as I mean, you and I are talking about right now, I can't muscle a lap in a pool, but I could probably do it for maybe two or three <laughs> and then I'm, I'm burned out. And now I'm, and then cause I don't know how to relax. I don't know how to float. <coughs> if I don't know how to float, I'm going to drown <laughs> because I'm not willing to relax and embrace uh, the process. So. Yeah. And if you're going to go hard, you got to know the race that you're running. And so how long can I sustain this effort? And if you're like, but I need that kind of output and that type of power, then you need somebody looking at that, that can coach you to that level so that you can perform that without getting yourself, you know, like this, the saying that which does not kill me makes me stronger bothers me a little bit because I always think unless it totally cripples you. Hmm. That's a good point. Oh, you right. know, people don't bring that one up very often. And that's a classic. That's a classic <laughs> one. For especially yeah. Problems. So, and I, 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 and I love the spirit of that quote cause I know it's what it's getting at, but there's always the flip side. Right. Sure. And if you're, type a hard charging there's always like the flip side and it's thinking about but i don't want to be injured and crippled and i want to be able to get to the start line and there's times when you cannot prevent injuries but i believe that like, most injuries are self-imposed oh god yeah, i'm guilty of that at least in my life you know <laughs> and, and um so important to to have that balanced mindset because i don't feel like life ever really truly balances you know yeah. with the way you know just the way society and everything is today you never really balance that but inside your balance you're always making shifts and changes and um making sure that your internal compass is going you know what i'm saying oh i definitely know what you're saying because i i i think it's important the listeners hear what you and i are talking about right guys like really listen to this because i'm a hard charger i still am to this day okay i'm still not I, i'm going to throw this word out there because i'm waiting to bring it up perfect air quotes for the, for the, for the people who are listening, not watching this on video is, <laughs> and I had a great mentor tell me this. He's like, Scott, he's like, the day you stop chasing perfection is the day you start succeeding. And I was like, what do you mean? He's like, he's like, I know he's like, this sounds like a flip, but he's like, think about it. If you reach perfection, what's the point of living life? He's like, all the great experiences that have changed you more you throughout your life and are yet to still morph you ahead come from making mistakes and learning from them. He's like, yeah, the wins are cool. Like the medals you get every once in a while, finishing a Spartan race, blah, blah, blah. He's like, it's great. Those are just little notches on the post, but he's like, the biggest, most powerful things that you actually learn that help direct your path in life are the mistakes, are the errors you make. He's like, so why the hell would I want to live a perfect life? He's like, that means I'm done. There's nothing else to learn. Everything is perfect. He's like, how boring is that? He's like, damn. And it's such a and it's such a cocoon too to me. I I I believe that perfection is very much, in my experience, rooted in fear. Mm. There's there's a there's a huge fear component to it because it, you know if if everything has to be lined up to be perfect, first of all, you're not going to go anywhere because you're not going to make any decisions because like like oh if I can't do it perfect, I'm not. Yeah. Which is sort of like the whole line of if I can't do it 100, percent I'm not going to do it, which is a total uh, type class. A thing to say. <laughs> classic quote paralysis by analysis all the business gurus like to use it you know yeah. it's, like, it's, it's, it's legit it's legit people get paralyzed over they, they they absolutely do and then it's the people that aren't thinking and trying to be so perfect that surpass because they can live with that level of imperfection imper and there's a difference between perfectionism and being somebody who has incredible standards for yourself and for your life hmm. right but wow. i think having fear and perfection is not a very high standard. I think it's a very low one. And if, if we can recognize little things like that and subtle shifts in our psychology and move to something that's more driven by a, like a healthier <laughs> way to pursue what we're going after, it's so important. Like if I wanted to be perfect, um, like I'll sign up for swim meets as a, for instance, 
where hey, you can always win. <laughs> no, yeah, right. <laughs> right? Hey, man, look at my perfect record. I just keep crushing. <laughs> no, but it's a, like I sign up for stuff, and it doesn't. I don't scratch a race because I think like, oh, I'm not going to do that good. Who freaking cares? That's an opportunity for me to get in the pool and with all the imperfections, see what I can do and how much of myself I can give to the effort and pour into it. And and that's like some of the most magical performances we've ever seen as people who are just sick. I remember, was it Michael Jordan or something that was just sick as a dog during like the yeah, end of yeah, like NBA final. And that's what people want to see. People don't want to see the professional. I mean, it's cool to see the professional athlete when they're totally healthy, but it's when they're, they've got a fever and everything else yeah. and they pull through. He, he literally had the flu. That's a classic uh, part of his career history that if people really know, like, Motivation yeah. stories. That's a like, dude. George, he proved the power of mind over body. Right, the mindset is everything. He put in so many reps, day in and day out, whether he had a flu or not. He's like, dude, I've been training for this. He's like, it's just, just do it. I mean, he's, you know, obviously he became the Nike one of the biggest Nike spokespersons out there. He's a classic example. <laughs> do it. He's like, all right, I got the flu. Oh well, I'm supposed to be one of the best basketball players in the world. It's time to prove it. Yeah. Exactly. And that's one thing that, uh, you know, people at the top, you know, world class, they don't tend to make a lot of excuses. I don't know why that is. I, you know, it's, it's befuddling to me. Why don't they constantly make excuses? I, I like to talk about, and you know, the funny thing is, as I talk about this stuff, just because I specialize in peak performance and everything doesn't oh, mean yeah. that I've like perfected all this and that I'm great and I do all this stuff right. I screw this stuff up all the time, right? But I know how to get back on track. And I, one thing I like to talk about, you know, I, in talks I'm giving and coaching is that only common men and only common women have or can afford the luxury of excuses. Mm. And wow, there's a reason Michael Jordan is who he is because he didn't whine and cry about it he sucked it up and but, you know it goes back to obviously sometimes working through an injury is not smart either that's not what we're talking about oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> that's a different thing altogether no that's a good point and again for our listeners i'm actually again you guys have to go check out youtube once in a while because like i'm sharing his site and obviously you can just go to a site you know birdfordperformance.com it's not hard but he's got i said he's got the coaching page where i'm doing sharing now on the speaking page because as you hinted at you love talking about vitality, security, prosperity, productivity, and efficiency. These are all things that peak and average day people all need to constantly put the reps in on and improve upon. And I think kind of like we want to start bringing the show to a close on this theme here is that you as a peak performance coach, there is no such thing as perfection. You're just further along on the timeline. It just means that you've accomplished a few more things than the person who's just getting started. If that person's going to be where you're at today, and you're going to be further along the timeline, hopefully, as long as you stay on this path, right, is growth. Growth should never slow down. This is life. We keep growing. Yeah, absolutely. And it's, again, when I've been around most people that are true, true perfectionists, if they can't let go of it, they tend to be really, really miserable. And for those of us that are goal-oriented, which I would say probably most of us are, we're like, we're going to get it done. We're going to tackle it. We're going to go get it. We're going to make it happen now. And that's just sort of the mindset. And it's great because it gets us started. But again, sustainability has to do with finding the magic in not only finding the magic and the journey and enjoying it, but seriously learning to love putting in the repetition and whatever that is for you. You're like, you know what? I know other people aren't doing what I'm doing right now. And I feel tired and it's long and it's windy and it's uphill and it's difficult, but I'm still here. And, um, I just, I love, I love that type of, that type of person, man. It fires me up. (laughs) Well, it's, I I look, this is how silly I am with my hard charger mindset is that, you know, Saturday this weekend um, was obviously June 30th. That's the anniversary of, of the fall 19. I take that very seriously. I literally forgot it was, I, forgot, I thought it was Sunday, not Saturday. And like a month or two ago, my buddy who owns the walk, because I trained at a couple of different CrossFit gyms besides my own little personal gym space here. And this will all connect full circle. So I think one gym, my buddy's like, hey man, we're going to have Hot Shots 19. The Saturday, you, you never miss it. You're going to be here. I was like, I look at my calendar and I'm like, oh no, actually I'm I'm um I'm competing with my other buddy who owns another CrossFit gym. His 10-year-old daughter 
um, mm. it's got this weird thing about me and whatever. And she's just like, she wanted me to be her teammate for a, it's their second annual family friendly CrossFit competition where moms and dads and kids and all that. And, but he's got to run the comp and she wanted to work out with me. Mm. And I was like, all right, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not a kid's guy, but I was like, okay. So I, I just said yes. And didn't even look at the calendar. So I was like, crap, you know, I mean, so Saturday morning, I'm flipping a 500 pound tire uh, in a parking lot at 8 a.m. And then, I'm, I mean, this goes on, there's like three heats. Like, so I didn't get out until a, that's like a four hour long competition. And now it's a hundred degree heat. And I was like, I, I, got, I, I have to do Hot Shots 19. I have to do it today. Today's the day. I always do it today. And I get home and I'm just, I'm just blasted. I was like, and now it's, you know, it's two o'clock in the afternoon and it's even hotter. <laughs> And I was like, I'm beating myself up about this. It's like, you have to do Hot Shots 19. And I, was, I just took a deep breath and was like, Scott, you can always do it tomorrow. I mean, probably be more sore tomorrow because now the competition is going to end. What did I do? So Sunday, I went and did it in my garage. I put it on video and I put it out to social media because I wanted to share the names of the 19. So in the end, I still met my goal. I still, I always do Hot Shots 19. I did it. Like why I was beating myself up about not doing it on the day they died. Not the end of the world, Scott. <laughs> yeah. You can still do it. You can still video it if you wanted to. You can leave a message out there to the masses, hopefully inspire other people to do it. That was my master plan of it. And even my fiance, she's like, why? She's like, just do it tomorrow. And then and on Sunday, she's like, you still going to do it today? It's like 95 degrees already. I was like, yeah, it's going to suck. But, <laughs> but I'm doing uh, it. I'm doing it. So, I mean, there's a good example right there, right? Like, I'm, mm -hmm. I set the goal. I'm not happy about the timeline. I'm like, <laughs> so, <laughs> You still did it. <laughs> and, and it's, that's a, that's a, yeah, you did it. And I, again, I think we're, we're, you know, I love talking to you because just like, like-minded, just like your listeners, we're, we always want things. I always want, I'll speak for myself. I always want things to happen faster than they're actually going to. Oh, hell yeah. Well, especially when it comes to my business, dude, I'm right there with you. I'm yeah. completely impatient with my business goals. <laughs> <laughs> And, and I think, you know, like there's a beauty about leaders being impatient. And I think one of the things is politely, compassionately being impatient with ourselves and being patient with results. Mm -hmm. Just a little like thing that. like that can make a huge difference for you. Dude, it's going to take longer than you think. So be impatient with yourself and your work ethic and everything else. But don't be miserable because you're not at the summit yet. And, yeah. you know, you're not going to, you're not going to actually, you're going to slow down and you're going to get there even slower if you get into bad states of mind and things that don't empower you and drive you with the right emotions to take the right actions to get to the right place. Oh, yeah. um, so it's just little shifts. It's, you know, everything is built on those tiny things day after day after day. And, you know, sometimes the gap between people that are people that win and people that don't it might be a huge gap, but really, I find it, it's, it's not that big of a gap. I it's, think it's all a mind game, too. I it's mean, a in that mind game. game. Yeah. Yeah, heck yeah. It's a mind game. And some of the, <clears throat> the differences in people's beliefs, it's between somebody who's going to win and somebody who's going to lose. It's even the syntax in the sentence and changing one word or put, right, inserting mm -hmm. one different thing into, into your belief. <laughs> Right. Uh, or like I'm impatient with myself, but I'm patient with the, the process and the results. Sure. Yeah. By the way, do you hear my coon hound at all? Or is this microphone that good? Do, yeah, no, I, so I like I can hear and I was wondering, I was like, yeah. is that a coon hound? Because I that's, that's, I, our, that's our coon hound. So <laughs> I, I, here's the best part. When I first started the show, I was just like, Dave, I was like, you gotta keep our coon hound quiet. I was like, put him outside, whatever, whenever I have a show. Now I just don't care, you know. That was 2016. I'm like, dude, we have a coon house. It's part of our lives. I mean, if he suddenly comes in, <laughs> guess what? That's the advantage of me having a business that I can run from my house, right? I, I, I have a home studio. We have a coon house. So, yes, that's Calvin. He's, he gets impatient. So Yeah. Um, Shout out to Calvin, by the yeah, way. Yeah, Calvin. Man, thanks hi. for coming on the show, bro. Uh, <laughs> I'll go give him a piece of cheese and some steak. Co-host. Co-host. <laughs> but uh, I, I love your points on this because, it, again, I want to make sure people always hear this is that none of us are perfect. We all still struggle with this stuff. I just struggle at it at a different level in a different way. And, and my own fiance will call me on it. She's like, Kristen's like, Scott, relax. She's like, if you're meant to have it, you'll get there. So I was like, Oh, look at you being inspirational. Even though she's like the realist 
and she's a, she's an equine horse vet. Um, but just what you said right now was, it, it, for some reason, I flashed back to living in Colorado, and the first 14 er trip I did, this girl's visiting from Arizona, actually a bunch of girls, and we're all uh, all doing rock climbing. And the one girl's like, hey, I'm going to stay an extra month. I want to do some 14ers while I'm here. Anybody want to join me? I'm like, oh, I always want to do 14ers. For the listeners, that's hiking a 14,000-foot peak. Colorado's got a crap load of them. And she's like, well, the next one's coming up. She's like, I know you've never done it yet, but she's like, we're doing a double. She's I was like, yeah, hard charger. Let's do it. So we did Beerstadt and Evans because uh, nice. we were next to each other. And, and mm-hmm. That was my first 14er trip. I did, I did two. Oh, cool. So what do I normally do? Like, yeah, we got up a sunrise. We're up there. Um, I power beer stats, you know, a beer stat. Got to take our photos on top, and we continue on over the Sawtooth Ridge, up the Sawtooth Peak, was a 14er, get to the Evans, and then I learned, oh, Evans, you can drive to the top of. So there's people up there doing little poses. I'm like, you know what? Whatever, dude. I, I <laughs> um, It's different, right? How would you get there? Yeah. But, but then I, I still got to go back yet. We got to get back before sunset. Well, on the hike back, dude, I started getting, like, headaches and stuff like that, like, might have been some altitude related stuff. And I was like, yeah. and on that, she's just like, that probably could because I was, you know, I was speed hiking beer stat. And she's like, I told you a couple of times just to dial it back a notch. She's like, you're Mr. Athlete. You just got to go, go, go. And, and I, I paid for that. And it, the way, the way back to our cars was God awful. I, I, worst part of that hiking trip. I mean, it's still a powerful trip. Loved it. Um, but that was a good example of just, me being impatient or me just trying to like one up and like, Oh yeah, man, I, I'll, I'll crush this. I'm a former hot shot. I can, I can hike everything. Yeah. Okay. But you're supposed to be out here having fun, <laughs> achieving a new life goal. I don't need right. to raise the mountain. <laughs> yeah. And pacing, right. Like knowing what yeah. the road ahead is, like we said earlier, it, it, it comes into play, you know, if, if, and I've, I've made this mistake before um, in races and stuff, but if you swim, a 200 meter or 200 yard race and you like you dive in the water and you go at your 50 yard pace Hmm. it's just math cold hard math you're going to die and it's (laughs) good to know before you set out if i you know if we're and we we all do it right because you can miscalculate the pacing but i've done it before where i was like i'm just gonna get in and kill it and i killed myself and yeah. my time and everything else so um and for so what? It, yeah and for what right yeah. and then and then it's hard to enjoy that too right so yeah and all of a sudden like, now now it was supposed to be a fun great athletic achievement or a race event or whatever and it's like now you're suffering through it right like again that last couple hours back was just god awful like i just <laughs> did not enjoy it at all and then and then and then you get to the bottom of evans and it's going through the swamp lands so now you're like the hike's even harder because you're trying to find spots you don't sink into. It's just like, oh, I, it's, normally I don't care where I hike, but when you have like splitting headache, I'm out to yeah. issues, and now you're dealing with this swampy crab, and like all of a sudden I just hated it. I'm like, oh, why do I hate this? And she's just like, it's fine. It's be fine. We're almost back in the car. Because she doesn't have any of the problems I have. Right. I, I was outpacing her, and then by the end of the trip, she's outpacing me. You know, she's, mm-hmm. she's pulling me along. And I was like, man, that was a great lesson. Yeah love those lessons <laughs> yeah yeah so yeah that's good i feel like you know, the marathon that I, I get wake up calls from ladies all the time <laughs> hey me me too my my wife is the most phenomenal individual i know and she's and the cool thing about it is i'm more um i'm like super empathetic i'm i'm more in, cater to like the emotional side I really really get and so I help her I explain that she, she's like why is this person doing this thing and I'm like because like this 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 and this and I can kind of understand what's going on beneath it and behind it sure. but she's the one that you know I sometimes if I even you know I get myself spun up over something she's like listen just think about this think about last time that that, 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 that bullet point and I'm just going you were such a wizard. What did you yeah. just do? <laughs> you were so right. Thank you for being in my life. <laughs> I, will, I will say I'm not always as good with response like you are there, but it's like there is a balance. And if, when you find the right partner, it does create a good balance. And I, and I, I, I fought that process. Uh, I will be married next year. So it, oh, congrats, man. That's um, awesome. Yeah. Uh, you'll appreciate this. Doing heli skiing in Banff, Canada, in Alberta for our wedding so 
Um, that is that I just my friend that is so <laughs> flipping epic I can't yeah. even begin to tell oh, yeah. you how much I admire that and how much I'm not talking about it because of the stuff I'm so excited <laughs> <laughs> you should be that is crazy so you're gonna get like you better go pro the heck out of all Thank that you. I said the same thing and she said she's just like well um, all your friends have GoPros and all the footage they've ever recorded is still on that GoPro they never done anything with it I said Kristen I have a podcast show, a YouTube channel, Facebook. I'm gonna use the content. Trust yeah. me. I, I need I need to one up Red Bull. Okay, there's that competitive spirit <laughs> right there. I don't think Red Bull's produced a lot of wedding adrenaline junkie ski movies. I, I think we might be able to make a dent in that market. And you're just gonna be even more her hero when that actually goes up you put the video up and you get the response back like that stuff doesn't happen every day i mean that's going in the right and the, and the thing of it is i really i love the digital age for the pieces of now we can record things and put them out there and they're online and it's like out there forever which scares some people and to me it's just that's the it, coolest thing in the world it scares you to begin and then, yes. again big picture the whole episode here right and then you start putting more of the reps in i tell people in businesses i'm like guys go facebook live Oh yeah, just try it. I do it all the time now. I, I literally, my friends now we were doing a mountain uh, a mountain biking bachelor party a couple weeks ago for a buddy of mine, Evan Vermont. So we spent four days up there, covered like seventy miles of trail. And I'm like, I'll oh, just give it to Scott. He'll 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 live it, video it, whatever. Like so I'm just known as that guy now, I guess, in the friend circle. I'm like, yeah, but I wasn't always. I said yeah. because I like sharing moments. If they can change people or inspire somebody to try something different, do it. I'm not saying you got to go mountain bike or hike a mountain, but go go for a run. Go go buy a mountain bike. I don't know. Go rent a mountain bike. There you go. You can rent mountain bikes. Try mountain biking. I love it. It's one of my favorite sports. So one thing I love about you, real quick, is you keep coming back to this core thing and something that is obviously important to you is is you know if that can inspire somebody. And I think sometimes when things are challenging or people are fearful and they're coming up against something they're not good at rem they're better at reminding themselves of their fear and all the obstacles in the way than like why am I here in the first place yeah. and if you keep coming back to like why am I here in the first place what is really most important that it's it gives you a much better shot that you're going to take that next right step and do the next right thing and you know again earlier when you talked about only the people with the courage have the courage to start ever stumble upon the things or things that they wish would never end. Oh yeah. Uh, you know, yeah, sometimes I mean, it's the little things reminding yourself of what you're about and what's most important and what's the bigger picture. Yeah. It, it, again, the key word there you threw in there, we didn't really dwell much in this episode, but this will be on another episode I'm airing soon. Um, I have a regular co-host psychology like you sports psychologist, uh, Dr. Megan Cannon. She's here local. So we nice. met at a, at a core life eatery and we videoed live Facebook live, everything. And then I recorded two podcast episodes out of that video content. And one of them was we were talking about the power of starting is that all the game plans, all the coaching, all the programming that'll come in the beginning. Just start, like just, just take, that's the biggest, you get over that first hurdle. Starting is the hardest hurdle, honestly. Yeah. Once you go, because then it's like, it's like getting a wheel to move down the hill. Even if it's made out of solid concrete, you start moving that thing one inch. My 500 pound tire on Saturday. Once you feel that leave the ground, now you're committed, dude, because you don't want to drop that. <laughs> <laughs> no, you don't. You're getting under that, okay? And because uh, <laughs> like, I was the only one in that competition. This is not a brag, I'm just giving this an example. I was the only one, that, that's why my arms look like this. That's in the tire, and I'm all bruised up because I'm the only one that made three laps. And this one dude, my buddy Sean, I love him, strong as heck, but he's not the endurance guy. Yep. He did two and a half, well, two laps. He's like, I wasn't going for three. He's like, you're crazy. Won the competition. That was one of the heavier weighted uh, scored workouts. I knew that yep. strategically. So right. I was all in. And then here's the best part. This is why I wanted to tell it to you real quick. I was so proud of her. This little 10 year old girl, Lindsay, I've never seen her do like she, her father brings her there on the weekends and they're, they're, the girls were there doing the girly stuff in the, in the childcare room. I, I never see her do workouts ever. And this girl completes a third lap with her tire, makes it to the white line where I'm there, like way on, way on the tire. I'm like, I'm just, Lindsay, you got it. Come on. Hits the final flip at the last second, and she completes three laps. The only kid to complete three laps of her tire. And I was like, 
he, he came up with me later. He's just like, where did that come from? And I was like, that's your girl, bro. That's your girl. Like that. I tried, I mean, I'm getting chills right now. I was talking about it. Cause it's like, and then it was like, it was like that the rest of the morning. Like, um, she was the anchor on our team. I was doing the assault bike. She's doing the rower. She had the last row. She just spazzes out ah, with the rower. <laughs> Her mo- mother-in-law, he's standing there. They're just like, what, what is that? I was like, I, I don't know. It's your daughter. I'm like, yeah, go girl, go. <laughs> And where did that come from? And, and it's like, and that's such a powerful environment. That's, if you put yourself in a sort of like the fiery crucible, if you will, there's going to be things come out of you that afterward, you're like, where the heck did that come from? And it's yeah. almost otherworldly. And it changes, you know, your perception of who you are. And by the way, I was going to tell you, Scott, I think you should think about <clears throat> positioning yourself as that girl's sports agent. Just a, just a tip. <laughs> I was so proud of her, man. She's just a cute little girl with glasses. And, like, I did not think she had any athletics, like, at all. Like, I was like, okay, she, she's probably going to be, like, a doctor one day or something. I don't know. Yeah. Um, but it was funny, though, because afterwards, she's, like, I, I was getting texts the rest of the afternoon from him, from her, like, thank you so much. Uh, she's already talking about competing next year. Cool. Like, well, <laughs> so cool. And he's just like, where did that come from? I was like, here's the difference, dude. I coach kids for probably, you know, 11 years ski racing. I was like, they're not there to impress their dad. They're there for themselves and they're there for their coach. I was like, you can't be the coach. You're the dad. It's like, she's not, I mean, she loves you and you, you know, daddy's growing all that. But I was like, clearly there was something else there. I was like, I, I think she might've been doing it because I was her teammate. I don't know if that was or wasn't. He's like, Oh no. He's like, Oh yeah, that was definitely you. He's just like, I, I've never seen her that side of her. He's like, I'm so blown away. He's like, you have no idea how much this means to us. She's, he's like, you're a great friend. And I'm not, I'm not telling this as a brat. I want people to hear this because, like, guys, this is what we're supposed to be doing for each other or for each other's kids. I am not a father figure. Don't want to be a dad. Even my fiance, she's like, you're going to go compete with a 10-year-old? <laughs> she's like, should I sign your death warrant now? <laughs> it's like, because we're just not kiddie people. Like, we want to be yeah. the cool aunts and uncles. And I said, well, I was like, as long as she doesn't cry, I think I'm good. <laughs> <laughs> exactly like literally that's what i said before <laughs> it's like just don't cry i'm good and not one ounce of that like i was i was inspired by her that's yeah. like i i told i came up to them i'm like listen i was like when she unleashed that tire flip i said we are winning this i was like i don't care i was like she's leading with a medal because i just i've never seen a child do that like that was awesome so that's 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 incredible man i love yeah. that story that's oh, yeah cool. I, I could be your agent yeah sure okay <laughs> <laughs> Great idea. Uh, but see, isn't that what we're all talking about, right? I mean, peak performance aside, uh, transformational dog training aside, everything you've done, I, it's kind of like the epiphany I'm getting just saying this stuff to you. It's like, okay, it doesn't matter if I've been a hot shot or a hiked 14 or whatever else. I was like, that experience, I'm still coming down off of the high from this weekend from that little girl, from Lindsay. I was like, dude, that's powerful. She's still yeah. developing. She's only 10. No one did that for me when I was 10. Yeah. Right? Yeah, it, yeah, absolutely. And, it, and if they had, you know, you ever think about that? And if I had, you know, this, even a person that may have come along later in our life, and everybody comes in when they're supposed to, but you think about, you know, maybe we can be somebody really special for somebody coming in at a time that is so important for them. And yeah, all the stuff we do and we accomplish, you know, in, in my opinion, it doesn't really freaking matter in the larger scheme of things, you know, when yeah. we're in the ground and stuff and we've kind of moved on to whatever happens afterward. It's going to be the legacy and the inspiration and the things, what we passed on that was worth passing on coming from the deepest part of ourselves and our spirit. And sometimes that, that again, that spirit to compete and push ourselves that rubs off on people like spirit can get caught. Mm. And that, and that's the difference between just intellectual. Yeah. Yeah. Intellectual knowledge versus catching the spirit of sport and, and winning and compassion and helping and giving to other people. It's, and, it's worked on me, dude. I did that marathon because my buddy ran that same marathon. I watched him in the sidelines the year before. And I'm like, I'm coming back and I'm doing this with you. Like we did it in memory. One of his college buddies who oh. unfortunately had passed away due to a mm. medical mistake at a hospital brain thing. I don't know, like he was running in his memory and his brother was running his memory and his father was running his memory. And I'm like, I'm joining. I can't, I can't stay on the sidelines. So he, that, that energy inspired me, right? Um, yep. 
finding out about firefighting was because of a girl, like her energy to go back west and become a, a female hotshot. Like I was like, oh my god, like that 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 changed me. So it is true. This energy can be contagious with the right audience, with the right people. But if we don't share that energy, or share those stories, or take these actions, yeah, it's not it's no longer not just about us. It's yeah. what people are we possibly missing? That's yes. what, honestly like you and I talk about this right here, right now, dude. It just reinforces why I have the podcast. Like, dude, I don't have millions of downloads yet. Uh, you know, Live the Fuel continues to grow. But it's like, dude, we're putting this content out there to the world. Mm-hmm. And the beauty of the online space is there's going to be people two years from now listening to this episode because it's digital content. Yeah. So we're, we are literally, every single episode, every single second and minute you and I have spoken tonight, we are leaving behind a legacy of positive energy and positive content. Right. Heck yeah. Heck yeah. We are. And, and all of us, I believe in our lives, <clears throat> in some ways we're on the playing field and we're going, come on, come on, get onto the playing field. Yeah, right. Yeah. Because we're on the sidelines by choice. Right. And there's other areas of our life where we are on the sidelines and there's other people that are calling to us. And I think identifying that, like, where am I in the game? And my role is to help encourage other people. And where am I playing small? And I'm on the sidelines and I'm kind of like keeping my head down because I don't want other people to see me. But sometimes it's nice to have somebody call you out and be like, you're stinking fantastic. Like, get out here. Let's play. You've got what it takes. Like and- my, boy, my boy Jason last year with the triathlon. Like, he called me out. And my fiance and everybody else. But because <laughs> they knew that I'd eventually say yes. I yeah. they knew that. They said, oh, yeah. well, you've done all this. You had to say yes, because we just called you out. <laughs> <laughs> no choice now, right? Yeah. That's the power of these inner circles. So listen, man, this has been a powerful episode. We'll have to get you back on here in, in the near future, because I feel like there's so much more for you and I to rap about and, and hopefully get through to some other people out there. So, I mean, how many podcasts have you been on, by the way? Uh, how many have I been on? Yeah. Um, I don't know. I feel like I've, been, I've only been on like a handful, probably like oh, wow. nine, or, nine or ten. All right. So we're part of building that legacy. I like it. Hey, man. Yeah, absolutely. And um, I certainly hope that this is a benefit to, you know, your your listeners. I I was really looking forward to talking with you just because of your background and and some of the the commonalities and just rubbing shoulders with you. So totally appreciate this opportunity. That's kind of why I do the co-hosting format is I want this. I mean, some people are like, oh, the host talks too much. Well, it's my freaking show. Of course, I'm going to freaking talk on my show, guys. Ladies and gentlemen, and these, <laughs> Live, Live, Live the Fuel is my brand. There's a fire in the logo because I'm a former firefighter. Hello. Of course, I'm talking. But it's not an interview format. Like, yeah, there's some interview style to it a little bit. But it's like, dude, it's you and I. It's us having a conversation, getting to know each other. Yeah. Maybe to be a little selfish on that because I want to get some good nuggets and knowledge out of meeting you as well. But then you, and, and my hope is of the co-hosting format, you leave with some more fire to take back to your practice and your clients and your following, right? Abs- absolutely. Yeah. Give and take. Absolutely. And I, I've been, I definitely have enjoyed talking with you and, and getting just different people's perspective and what they've done to overcome and where they see value and what's really pushed them forward to, to be the best that they can be and to keep pushing that envelope uh, for the future. So it's, it's, it's awesome. Fun, isn't it? It's awesome. It's super fun. I always leave a podcast like happy. So. <laughs> <laughs> Me too, man. Um, Me too. Well, well, listen, let's bring this show to a close. Um, my guest co-host, do share the final words. You have so many amazing words, but uh, I've done some, obviously plenty of, we've done, a, we could have done a little more screen sharing. I always like to leave with a little bit of an opportunity for improvement. But again, ladies and gentlemen, uh, BurfordPerformance.com, the Burford Performance System. And again, if you go on Amazon, actually let's do the last little screen share here because I'm a fellow dog lover, just Calvin already said hello earlier transformational dog training on Amazon. I'll make sure this is also linked in the show notes as well. Uh, but obviously, if you dog lovers out there, if you're trying to bring out the best in your dog by bringing out the best in yourself, you might want to get that book. So uh, I'm going to show it to my fiance when we get off the call here tonight. So, uh, <laughs> cool, man. Thank you. So, but listen, so f- final words for the show. How, how would you like to close this out? Is there an all-encompassing message? I mean, somebody like yourself speaking, uh, coaching leadership, peak performance, I mean, productivity, fulfillment, maximization, you're doing all this stuff, you know, mm-hmm. building your legacy. Like what's an all encompassing message you'd like to leave behind the audience? They forget everything else we've all talked about. <laughs> Just have the, having the, the courage and the boldness to step up to the plate the next time you need to. And the next time fear shows up, running toward it. 
instead of shying away from it, if you've been doing that, we all have, we all are susceptible from that time to time, but just stinking facing it. You know, I was having <clears throat> some, like, I've had reoccurring dreams and stuff, and it's been going on for years, and I realized, dude, I just need to turn and face the things in my dreams. And I know that's kind of, kind of might sound weird or whatever, but it completely changed things. Cause like, I don't want to run in my dreams and I certainly don't want to run in life. And unless it's toward the fight. So run toward the fight, have the boldness and the courage to do it. And if there's anything that I can do to help, I mean, I'm happy um, to check in with people. I do have a private Facebook group called the CEO athlete. So for oh, people nice. that are, yeah, like business owners and they also compete in athletics, that might be something to check out. And people can also like, dude, if you want to shoot me an email at info at Bergford and just go. tell me like, listen, what is the top thing you're gunning for this year? That's really important to you or your biggest challenge that you've been coming up against. You know, I, I'm happy to get on the, get on the line with somebody and maybe put together just a basic plan or something. So, um, but yeah, that's well, what yeah, I got. If it helps people start, I think that's an amazing offer because that's sometimes, I mean, they don't need to become long-term clients. Sometimes they just need that. They need somebody to say, Hey man, he's, he's the guy, he's the guy that got me to start. So yep. uh, I'll have to check exactly. out the CEO athlete. Cause that's literally, I mean, I actually, I actually call myself the chief intrepid officer. So if you know the definition of intrepid, my buddy that I ran that marathon with, yeah. he actually changed my job title for me. He must one day, he's like, dude, change your signature to chief intrepid officer. Look up the definition of intrepid and you'll understand what I'm saying. So I capitalized the E in intrepid versus the I and, and used that for like so a fun little spin on CEO. That's perfect. I love that. Right. Yeah, I so. wish I had that. Dang it. <laughs> hey, I, I pass it on. I mean, it, it can be shared. <laughs> you know, we, we could create a whole movement online. All of a sudden, there's like a new list. Like, well, who's like, wow, all these chief intrepid officers. I didn't know that title existed. Right? <laughs> it so, does now. Thanks it to does Scott. Now, people. There we go. We're sharing. <laughs> sharing is Karen. Sharing is Karen. That's so, right. So, hang tight. I want to give you a product to buy off the air. It's ladies and gentlemen, again, video feed too, because uh, I'm fast on the keyboard. If you need a community, you might want to check into his Facebook community, the CEO athlete, especially if you're feeling the vibe that you and I were just talking about. But obviously, again, go to his website too, Perfect Performance. But again, thanks for tuning into another powerful, powerful, peak performing Lit the Fuel podcast show. Uh, again, I think we definitely, at some form or fashion, fueled your health, your business, your lifestyle. Uh, but again, ladies and gentlemen, just keep taking action. Go towards the fight. Stop backing away. He said it best. And again, check him out at birdfordperformance.com. All the stuff we shipped uh, – typed in and, and saved and then blasted across social media and all the blog post notes we always do. So again, just keep taking action, people. We'll talk to you guys again soon. Remember, you too can live the fuel. And you're free of the pod. I just keep the video going for extra fun. It's like more behind the scenes. So Nice, nice. But, uh, yeah, man, I like it. So is that a newer group, the CEO uh, athlete? Yeah, I, I set that up really recently. So awesome. I just thought, you know, I should have a community. <laughs> that's that's um, awesome. Powerful thing you could use Facebook for is the, the group community building factor. I manage multiple groups in Facebook. One of my started four years ago has got over 4,000 people in it. So it's just, yeah. Dang, dude. Right by, yeah. Honestly, and that one, that one's for, I started that one because I, before I became full-blown entrepreneurial, I started a side hustle after fire, well, actually during fire, but I started after private. I had one of, I had a network marketing business with um, Isogenics. I still have it. Yeah. They still send me money. I still have a team. But I was like, great, I'm a CrossFitter. And people keep saying that Isogenics doesn't work with CrossFit. So I created a community. I called it Isa, you know, is a CrossFitter or Isa CrossFitter. And yep. I said, let's just see where it goes. And I, I don't even, I hardly even manage it anymore. It's just, it's a beast of its own. There's people in there from Australia and New Zealand and all over the place. I can't even keep up with it anymore. It's crazy. But you never know where these things are to go, but you just take action. You start a community. You put the right rules in place. You put the right people in there. Yep. And it hopefully will thrive. So absolutely uh, i have one i call it the fuel tank i started that when i started the show here i probably have a few hundred people in there so nice. um so yeah oh, good you have your questions good oh, i'll submit a i'll submit an inquiry to join so okay cool man yeah because again if i can give any of this energy back to you and your community that's that's that give and take right i mean yes you came on our podcast show and you gave back to our audience but it's like what can i do in return so 
No, that's awesome. And, and I, and I'd love to have you. And, um, you just, and just let me know, man, if there's anything that I can do to help serve you or, um, add anything to, to your people, you know, that was, that's really what I wanted to do today is hopefully say something when you said, you know, what's like the message you want to take away. I'm like, <clears throat> great. I'm just going to go with what's on my heart right now. That's and yeah. I, li I like it. sneaky, sneaky. I have I had a few people get frustrated with that. I'm like, guys, I already have the really nice form that you fill out on the website when you become, you know, the schedule is like, I've already given you a lot of tips, like telling people to use a headset for God's sake. Like, really? You don't know by now to use a headset to improve your sound quality. But that aside, I was like, I can't give you everything. I mean, right. and again, dude, even if you, I knew you weren't going to bomb that question, but it's like all the content you've already shared today, you had nothing to worry about. <laughs> <laughs> so uh but yeah no obviously like I, that same question to me is back to you because you have already provided to my community so i already owe you one so if there's anything i can do either within this community or i don't know how you if you i've, I've, I've literally had, i've had coaches on the show before i've been invited back to do like um because they don't have a podcast but these guys because facebook now you can build what's called facebook watch you build your own tv channel so the one guy is starting to he's building the content now and then he's gonna be publishing a whole bunch of videos Nice. But he's had one on one with. So it's kind of like a video version of podcasting. So, cool. uh, but he wants to launch it in Facebook as Facebook Watch. So, should be interesting. So, very cool. That's yeah. interesting. Yeah. I love it. It's Facebook spin on YouTube. They, they want to yeah. keep you on Facebook. So, um, that's why that they do. I was everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> but hey, I had a blast, man. Uh, it's great to connect with a, with, a, with a native Colorado. So, I have uh, a few right. friends that are natives, as I never was. So, that's my that's my claim to fame right there scott no it's been it's been a pleasure too and i i definitely appreciate all your time and um let's definitely keep in touch i'll let you know if there's anything pops up and and certainly you can do the same again if anything hey you know for my community this would be really great just let me know dude oh yeah i'd be honored to get back so perfect right. well you have a great night sir and uh enjoy that colorado weather you as well thanks take care you have a good night all right take care all right bye